Google helps humans talk to dolphins. There's rumors of an OpenAI social network. Kling 2.0 goes live. OpenAI launch 03 and 04 Mini. Claude 3.7 is king of gaming. XAI launches Grok Studio. The mid-journey interface gets an overhaul. And it's the return of Google Glasses. All this and more in this week's AI Roundup. It looks like it's going to be another big week for model releases, and OpenAI has kicked it off in style by releasing GPT 4.1, which will be OpenAI's flagship model for complex tasks. The release also adds GPT 4.1 Mini and GPT 4.1 Nano. All of these models are only available via the API. These models have a significantly larger context window of up to 1 million tokens, and they come with better instruction following and greater coding efficiency. OpenAI claims they are smarter, cheaper, and have better latency than their predecessor, GPT-40. GPT-4.5 will be removed from the API in July. At this point, don't even try to make sense of the OpenAI naming convention. In another instance, where we have to double-check the date isn't April 1st, Google has announced that it's going to help humans talk to dolphins. Google is working in partnership with the Dolphin Project and has developed Dolphin Gemma, an AI model aimed at translating dolphin vocalizations. This model has around 400 million parameters, allowing for real-time analysis of dolphin sounds in their natural habitat. Could this initiative really unlock our ability to talk with dolphins? And if it works, what other animals might we learn to communicate with? FreePick has introduced a new tool called Composition Reference. That allows you to generate a visual from either a reference image or a sketch with notes. Creating AI images from images is nothing new, but this tool emphasizes the structural elements of the image rather than the style. More interesting is the capacity to create a sketch with notes to instruct both visual structure and composition. This looks like a fantastic new addition from FreePick. And finally, Hugging Face is a leading AI development platform and today it announced that it has acquired Pollen Robotics, a French startup known for its open source humanoid robot, Ricci2. The collaboration will focus on the sale of Ricci2, which is designed for home use. It highlights a trend not only towards putting robots in the home, but also towards democratizing robotics access and capabilities through open source development. The Verge has reported that OpenAI is developing its own social network designed to compete with platforms like X. The project is said to be in its early stages, with an internal prototype that incorporates ChatGPT's image generation capabilities into a social feed. Is this a serious attempt to unseat X at the top of the social media news space, or just part of the Elon versus Sam beef? Regardless, it will be interesting to see what OpenAI can produce. Google's VO2 video generation model is now accessible to Gemini advanced users and Google One AI premium subscribers. VO2 allows users to create high-resolution, eight-second videos from text prompts, and it's been vying for the best generative video spot since its release. With it now being part of Google's AI subscription, the usage is likely to explode, and the reason to buy a subscription for Gemini is more compelling than ever. Anthropic has introduced a new research feature for its AI assistant, Claude. This is similar in nature to most of the other deep research kinds of tools that we've seen from other providers, but it has one important trick up its sleeve. As well as the usual web access, Claude's research tool can also access information from the user's Google workspace, including Gmail, Calendar, and Docs. This allows this research tool to combine knowledge from your Docs and about you personally to create a far more tailored response it also seems to allow a certain amount of agentic style operation across your workspace applications. And finally, after teasing it yesterday, Kling have launched Kling 2.0, significantly enhancing their text-to-video technology. This update offers improved motion dynamics, prompt adherence, and realistic character expressions, allowing for high-quality cinematic visuals. We're only just starting to see some real-world usage, but what we've seen so far looks stunning. Many users are already claiming that it's bringing cinema quality video into the hands of ordinary users. This new model has been integrated into FreePick, so if you have a subscription, you can start playing with it right now. Today, OpenAI released two new models, O3 and O4 Mini, which are now their flagship reasoning models. 
The real highlight is the fact that these models now incorporate tools like web search, Python coding, image analysis, and file interpretation all into a single work stream, enabling them to handle complex tasks with multimodal inputs and outputs. The image interpretation is particularly impressive as it not only deciphers the image, but is capable of using the information contained within the image as part of its reasoning. As expected, O4 Mini will bring slightly reduced capabilities, but with greater speed and cost effectiveness. These models will of course deliver some great incremental gains on the various benchmarks, but it's their capacity to be more general across their inputs and outputs that will make this a step change in AI models. OpenAI also launched a new feature for ChatGPT called the Image Library, enabling users to manage all their AI-generated images in one place. This feature is now available to free, plus, and pro users on both mobile and desktop. As models get more serious at producing assets like images and video, these kinds of organization and filing tools will become more and more critical. In more OpenAI news, reports have emerged that they are currently negotiating to acquire Windsurf, the AI coding tool that has become a fan favorite and the major competitor to Cursor. It's said that OpenAI is looking to acquire Windsurf for approximately $3 billion. If this goes through, then it will be an incredibly powerful combination. Earlier in the day, XAI announced Grok Studio, a rival to the canvas-style tools that we see available in other models like Gemini and Claude. The Studio option allows real-time collaboration on documents, code, reports, and of course, any games that you vibe coded. Grok Studio is able to execute code in Python, C++, and JavaScript, and it can integrate with Google Drive for file management. Gemini's canvas has been very well received since launch. Let's see if Grok can win some of those users over. And finally, the Unitry G1 Mini version went for a little run today and showed everyone just how much progress has been made with its fluid locomotion capabilities. I guess that one day it will be completely commonplace to see a robot going for a run like this, but right now these sights continue to fill us with awe and a little dread. Grok now has a memory that will remember all of your past conversations. This update allows Grok to provide tailored recommendations and advice based on the user's previous chats. Users will have control over their data, with options to view, edit, or delete conversation memories. Memory is another one of those features that's set to become ubiquitous amongst LLMs. Grok has also added workspaces. This allows users to organize conversations and files all in one place. This means that users can return to a workspace to continue an ongoing conversation or piece of research without losing all of the previous context. Gemini Live has been a big success since its launch, and today Google announced that it will be expanding its availability to all Android users, regardless of the plan that you have. So it's now free for everyone. If you haven't tried Gemini Live yet, if you have an Android phone, now is your chance. It's a really impressive tool, and the more you use it, the more uses you can think of for it. And finally, in a novel approach to benchmarking AI models, Video Game Bench or VG Bench is a new open source tool that tests vision language models like Claude 3.7 and Gemini 2.5 on 1990s video games. VG Bench includes 20 games from MS DOS and Game Boy emulators such as Zelda and Kirby, allowing researchers to evaluate AI agents while reminiscing about their misspent youth. In this round of testing, the winner was Claude 3.7, as it advanced furthest in Doom by reaching the blue room. So Claude 3.7 is the best gamer out of all the LLMs, and you won't find a cooler claim than that. Abacus AI has launched an interesting looking new tool called DeepAgent. DeepAgent is designed to combine a range of tools, sources, and LLMs together to take on tasks that would usually fall outside of the possibilities for just a single service. You can integrate DeepAgent with platforms like Jira, Google Workspace, and Slack, potentially making this a huge time saver in professional environments. We've seen several agentic style wrappers built around existing LLMs recently. Let's see if DeepAgent can stand out from the crowd. Midjourney has just released a new user interface that makes it look more like a fully fledged editing tool than a mere image generator. With the new layers and smart selection features, Users are able to achieve amazing amounts of control over the editing process and make fundamental changes to a scene's composition in seconds. In an increasingly competitive market, this kind of functionality could really help Midjourney to stay on top. 
Crea have launched an amazing new 3D scene creation tool called Stage. This new tool allows users to create a scene and then fill it with 3D models, entirely from text prompts. Each model can then be individually manipulated to get everything perfect. You can try it for free right now over at Crea's site. And finally, a TED video has been published showing a live demo of Google's prototype AI smart glasses powered by the Android XR platform. These glasses feature a miniature heads-up display and leverage Google's Gemini multimodal AI capabilities to produce some amazing results. In the video, the system is able to recall where various objects are and overlay a 3D map for directions to a location. If you want to integrate your tech more tightly into your life but aren't quite ready for a brain chip, this might be the answer.